everyone. I am Amita Sharma, co-founder of Nourish Talk. We offer prevention-based wellness programs in natural and holistic medicine that are backed by research, science, and successful outcomes. We present free education series every Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We bring, today, we bring a very relevant topic for Corona times because all of us are trying to live with the coronavirus. And the topic for today is how Ayurveda and yoga can help boost your immunity. Presenting this webinar, we have Dr. Gorang Joshi. Dr. Joshi is an internationally renowned Ayurveda physician who has published a lot of research in dermatology and oncology. He has done extensive research in management of side effects with chemotherapy using Ayurveda herbal medicine. Dr. Joshi is also president of International Psoriasis Foundation. Welcome, Joshi. Um, here. Namaste, all. Namaste, everybody. Namaste, Dina. We have. How are you? Great. So let me introduce Dina. Dina is a certified yoga therapist. She teaches mind body medicine and has worked extensively with the elderly and cancer survivors. So the, what we will be discussing, Dr. Joshi and Dina would be discussing Ayurvedic principles and immunity, Ayurvedic herbs and daily routines, and yoga and pranayam. Before, so now I give it to Dr. Joshi to go ahead with his webinar. Please, Dr. Joshi, start. Yes. Namaste, everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Gauran Joshi, international Ayurveda physician from India. I'm practicing since last 25 years as an international Ayurveda physician. It's really a great pleasure to be here on this platform on the Nourish Talk uh, with Amida Sharma ji and Dana Saidi. Uh, particularly, uh, everybody knows whole world is right now struggling with COVID-19. This is current pandemic is going on, and uh, almost uh, you can see almost 200 countries affected with this coronavirus and people are suffering a lot lots of people are dying and uh, 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 people are looking for the solution in form of vaccine or in form of some medicine and uh, at least till today it's not that much successful uh, the efforts are going on but still people are in search of some uh, solution. So uh, here it's a great chance to introduce Ayurveda in front of you. Uh, it's an uh, Indian system of medicine and one of the oldest science. Uh, you, I can say it is one of the mother of all medicine Ayurved is. And it's really a pleasure to share the Ayurvedic uh, concept of this particularly uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And today, world is scrambled to find a cure for COVID-19. And Ayurveda can play its role for preventing the spread and mitigating the effects of this disease. Particularly, uh, this disease or any pandemic or any epidemic, all these types of uh, episodes already described in Ayurvedic text. That is our Acharya Charak as in Vimanasthana, that is the chapter. They explained its Jana Pato Dvamusha. In the pandemic are caused by imbalance in general attributes like air, vayu, air means vayu, water means jala, country means desha and time. So next please. So particularly uh, right now everybody is uh, looking for the uh, medicine actually uh, that how we can prevent ourselves from this or uh, vaccine. But Ayurveda truly believes that everything is in your insight. Your immunity is very important. And this current disease that is COVID-19 can be categorized in Ayurveda as overlap of Vandvaj and Sannipata Jwar. Vandvaj means Vi Doshaj. You know, everybody knows about there are three doshas in Ayurveda. That is Vata, Pitta and Kapha. So Vi Dvandaj means two doshas are involved. And in Sanni Pataj means all the three dosas are vitiated in this particular week, in this COVID-19 pandemic. And the name can be given as Vata Shlesmik. Your Vata Shlesmik means Vata and Kapha is involved. Then Pita Kaflo 1, Sanni Pataj means Then later on, all the three dosas getting involved in this epidemic, in this pandemic. 
and a similar disease is described in our jwara chapter jwara means fever in charak samhita with above name now ayurveda says fever first came into existence due to the feeling of parigraha or accumulation or wants of unnecessary material things that is toxin that is called ama in ayurveda ama i will i will explain you what is the role of ama when we go ahead we move ahead how this ama means it's a kind of toxin that play a role in downgrading your immune system so ayurveda can work not only as preventive but also immunity boosting and also as a therapeutic i i would like to share you something some good news regarding this uh, uh, covid 19 situation in my state of gujarat uh, there are more than 5000 people who were been facilitated quarantined due to their close contact with covid 19 positive patients they were been putted on ayurvedic protocol for the prevention for 14 days all 5000 people were tested negatively on the 14th day of their facility quarantine so you just imagine how the power of ayurved that all were tested negative with only ayurvedic treatment diet and lifestyle modification so this is the power this is the strength of ayurveda and that is what i want to share with you all this particularly pandemic people are if you go to who website or if you uh, had uh, some seminars or webinars or anything people are talking about enhance your immunity enhance your immunity is very important thing so what is immunity that we need to know at the juncture of ayurveda the quite essence of all the seven dhatus you know ayurveda is tri dosha vata pitta and kapha and seven dhatus that is bodily vital channels that is rasa rakta mouse men asti majja and sukha rasa means lymph rakta means blood mouse men muscles so all these tissues and the point essence of all these seven tissues that is called ojas ojas is a vital immunity that prevents all tissues cells and species the ultimate distillation of each tissue combined together and it is main determinant of our immune status hence our resistance to disease so main we are focusing on ojas and now we are moving over some detail about the immunity how can we improve our immunity now when we are taking a talking about the immunity we need to know types of immunity first is coming congenital immunity that is coming from our parents from our family second we can say uh, time from the age from kid to young age young age to uh, middle age middle age to uh, old age then seasonal like summer winter and uh, uh, particular this uh, monsoon so that seasonal that is also according to the season according to time our body get immune and third is very important that is acquired immunity and for acquired immunity people are looking for some vaccines or some herbs but ayurveda emphasize not only vaccine or not only medicine or not only herbs but i would emphasize that diet exercise rejuvenation all package stress management everything we must include for improve our immunity and fourth immunity i would like to tell you about some herd immunity particularly in the united states maximum people getting infected right so it means it reaches to the mass so when mass getting infected and there is some immunity your antibody in your body they will generate immunity against such kind of antigen in your body and that is called herd immunity it is expensive because uh, in the united states almost uh, almost 75000 or, or near about 1 lakh people already died due to this because it's expensive because we need to expose to such pandemic condition to such infection so better if we are having a good Uh, immunity from our parents that is congenital 
second seasonal immunity that is build up that is also natural thing and third we need to go for some acquired immunity so how we can improve our immunity so we i already told you diet exercise yoga and this all are very important aspect of improve to improve our immunity so ayurveda believes that all diseases are a result of your weak agni means your digestive fire so here i want to tell you about our digestive process when we are taking lunch or dinner digestive process started in our stomach or in our digestive system right if we are having a good digestive fire then it digests very easily and there are two end products first is nutritive part and second is waste products right but when your agni your your digestive fire is low then your digestion become weak and when it becomes weak that, that divided this end products in three part first part is your nutritive products second part is your waste products and third part is not nutrition or not waste products but it's a kind of toxin that is called ama that is your undigested food material and when this ama is accumulation in your body in your some of the systems it will reduce the immunity and it will produce the disorders so when your digestion fire is not good then there is always chance to get infected so in particularly epidemic and pandemic go ahead go, go back in epidemic like uh, this particular uh, uh, covid 19 or before few years there was one uh, uh, epidemic in india that is swine flu so we need to correct the diet we need to improve our digestive fire right so we need to do something how we can improve our digestive particularly in this current situation which types of food we need to eat so the food that is easily digestible and light food must be we need to eat second intermittent fasting that is langan chikitsa in ayurveda that is very important because when you you just giving the rest to your digestive system gradually it digest the ama that is toxin from your body and that gradually improve your digestive fire so for that you can drink a warm water easily digestible food you can soak cumin seeds in warm water and use throughout the day so that is your digestive system second some herbs like some chitra kvidang pipli suthi that is dry ginger trikatu if you don't have a good appetite if you are having a problem or loss of appetite what you can do uh, in the before lunch or dinner you just take a ginger piece of ginger and chew it you just just make it practice gradually it will it will improve your digestion improve your uh, uh, digestive fire and improve your appetite so we need to focus if your agni is down if your digestive fire is down then there will be toxin that will decrease your immunity and you, there is a chance to get infected with such kind of infectious disorders then second most important thing is your bowel movement that is called kosha in ayurveda it is scientifically proven that the millions of microbia living in your gut help to enhance our immunity and protect protect us from various infections including pandemics and epidemics so our motion our bowel movement also must be clean and clear if you don't have that good and that also lower down your immunity so to have a clean coast a regular practice of mrudu virechan or mild laxative you can take it or take plenty of waters you can take milk you can take fruits vegetables that contains lots of fibers that help to clean the bowels you can take sometime harde or harita ki tablet or some trifala tablet or lavan bhaskar or avipatikar churna that are very important herbs but i want to emphasize that without taking any herbs you just focus taking plenty of water milk liquid diets fruits and vegetables that contains lots of fiber that will cleanse your bowel and by cleansing your bowel that also helps to nourish your immunity right so these are the two important thing now third most important uh, thing i would like to tell you 
that what kind of food you need to avoid that is well very important particularly people those who are watching this live maximum people they are from usa right or in the west western countries so there is no specific diet pattern in the usa because i often visiting uh, visiting usa so ahar that is called food forms the core of the whole immunity plan as some food ingredients help to boost immunity so what to avoid particularly in the us or in the west western countries people most of the time using leftover foods or frozen food or a food like ice cream pastries chocolates or stored food or tin food or they are drinking coca cola or pepsi co pepsi these are not good for the our digestive system so what to eat warm and fresh cooked food food that is very good for you for your immunity fruits like oranges sweet lime lemon grapes that are rich in vitamins and antioxidant and it also helps to boost your immunity so here also there is a role of vitamin c particularly in this pandemic they are giving vitamin c to the patients that also improve your immunity use dry ginger turmeric powder cumin powder that is also good for your digestive fire to digest your food easily so your food is your medicine i would always emphasize what you eat that will convert into your uh, ojas that is immunity that will nourish your all the channels all the sapta dhatu and finally it will enhance your ojas and it is enhance your immunity now one more thing there are two main entrants of this virus that is covid virus corona virus first is our nasal cavity and second is our mouth and third is our eye right so what we can do because there are some simple precautions people are taking that people are wearing masks wearing gloves and taking care by washing their hands with sanitizer that's it okay fine but sometimes if nothing is with you and then also you need to uh, uh, take care of your immunity or take care of yourself from preventing or from such infection so what you can do there is some treatment protocol that is you can do at your home that is nasya treatment means applying oil in your both nostrils and that becomes a nasal also creates a physical barrier lipid barrier and shields against entry of this microorganisms so here what we can do we can use anu oil that is available in indian store or you can go simply sesame oil or coconut oil or if you have nothing then you just have a cow ghee or cow uh, uh, i can say what uh, the proper word is uh, uh, purified butter that is from the cow milk you just apply on the both nostrils and that also will protect you from entering this um, virus from your nasal or nostrils second gargling what gargling that is very important gargling that is called gandusha helps to cleanse the throat larynx and pharynx and reduce the swelling you can you can use trifala churna or dasamul churna you can prepare uh, take water you just add this uh, trifala churna or dasamul churna and you can uh, take gargling and second most oil pulling if you have a sesame oil or coconut oil you just take it and just put it inside your mouth just like this that is called at least for 3 to 4 minutes and then take it out so this is called oil pulling so these are the best way because the thing is that here this is the entry of entry place of our this virus and particularly in the morning if you did do this nasya and oil pulling here when you wake up in the morning because of your uh, uh, dinner at night in the morning due to some cool weather always mucus mucus that's a kind of cough that always inside your nostrils and your mouth so by gargling and by doing hot water gargling it will cleans the mucus 
because if the mucus is there and if virus enters it will get nourish from this mucus and then it enters into your respiratory system and the same thing we need to apply scientifically that that, that cow ghee or the sea so it will prevent uh, it will make a barrier and stop entering the virus in inside your nasal strills and from prevent you to enter in your respiratory uh, stay namaste so yeah i'm going to talk about three ways that yoga is an ideal practice to do in the time of covid um i don't know if you can still see the program but i'm not seeing it right now but there's a stress <laughs> first thing i'm going to talk about is how um yoga is a wonderful practice to reduce the effects of stress therefore improving the immune function the second thing i'll talk about is how yoga improves our resistance in our respiratory system and i'll give you a breathing practice for that as well and the third thing is how the lymphatic system is strengthened from different yoga poses so let's start with the stress slide that um shows you that basically when we have more stress it changes every cell in our body and we know that inflammation is created from the stress response and we know that every time we have more inflammation in the body that our immune system thus becomes weakened so we want to be doing everything we can to minimize the effects of stress and yoga has long been proven as a remedy for um yeah so we're still on the stress slide um yoga has long been proven as a remedy for different conditions like heart disease mental health cancer chronic pain we know that yoga is a great thing to do to minimize stress thus um strengthening our immune system so the first breathing practice that i'm going to teach you is a great one to do if you are wanting to lower your stress levels in your body <clears throat> so just sit up nice and tall close your eyes if you like and we're going to take a few rounds of breath and i want you to notice the inhale as it begins notice that pause at the top of the inhale follow your exhale with your mind Notice the pause at the bottom of the exhale. Okay, and together we'll inhale two, three, four, and exhale two, three, four. So continue in this uniform way for a few rounds of breath, and then once you begin your exhale, see if you can exhale just a little bit more slowly. So. we're moving towards our exhale being longer than our inhale and this has really wonderful effects on your nervous system calming your nervous system and therefore increasing your immune response and ultimately and not everyone's going to get there right away but ultimately we want to get to that point that our exhale is twice as long as our inhale and we can do that by simply exhaling more slowly and completely okay so that's your 1 to 2 breath ratio that's the first practice we're teaching you today next and the next slide is about psychoneuroimmunology and basically that is a fancy word for saying that all the systems of our body are affecting each other at all times right <clears throat> so when we have more stress hormones in the body we know that our immune function is suppressed it affects our nervous system our endocrine system every time we experience stress it sends different hormones in the body and basically different breathing practices they could um combat this and they could build our respiratory resistance and we know that covid is very much a disease of the respiratory system So this next pranayama that I'm going to teach you is alternate nostril breathing. And we're going to use our right hand for a mudra to close off the right side of the nostrils and to close off the left. And for just simplicity purposes, we can use our thumb and our forefinger, okay? So if you want to do this with me, you can give alternate nostril breathing a try. Go ahead and plug your right nostril with your thumb, inhale into the left. Plug both nostrils. exhale out the right 
right away. Inhale, right. Hold at the top. Exhale, left. Straight away. Inhale, left. Hold at the top. Exhale, right. Move at your own pace. Do a few more rounds on your own. Close your eyes. Inhaling, right. Close them off. Exhale, right. Left, rather. One more on your own. And finish off by exhaling out the left. Bring your hands down. Simply notice if you feel any effects from the breathing practice. And that is your practice to strengthen your respiratory system. Okay. And then lastly, we're gonna talk a little bit about your lymphatic system and the need for your lymphatic system to be strong in the time of COVID. So we have our heart that pumps blood and oxygen throughout our entire body. And we have our lymphatic system that has lymph nodes placed all around that pumps lymph fluid throughout the entire body. And this lymph fluid is so important to combat those toxins, those bacteria, those viruses that come along. And the muscles, the arms and the legs is what helps to pump that lymph fluid. For example, if your immune system um, has been compromised, you've had lymph nodes removed as a result of surgery, if you've had surgery around cancer, then that means that you need that much more help to keep that lymph fluid pumping around your system. So I'm gonna show you two poses, and there's the last slide shows you parigasana, which I'm gonna demonstrate for you a moment, and then legs up the wall and a version of it. Okay, so showing you parigasana. If you want to do this with me or just have a look at the slide, you come from standing on the knees, you reach out one leg, I'm reaching out my right leg here. One thing I want to make sure is that my shoulders are right over my hips, my hips are right over my knees, that I'm not kind of leaning forward here, right? And we're getting into a lateral bend. This is great for the respiratory tract and it's great for the lymphatic system because gravity is working with me as I inhale my left arm up. So right there, I've got lymph fluid helping to move along the body, and I move into my side bend here. Breathing here, maybe reaching the chest a little bit towards the ceiling. And you can either hold the pose or you could move with the breath. Now inhale, coming straight up. Exhale, my arm down. Inhale, my arm up again. Exhale into my side bend. So you could do it either statically or you can do it with the breath. We'll move into the other side. As you set yourself up, don't work, don't worry if your foot, your toes are facing up or your foot is planting down. It really is about that side bending. Make sure you feel stable. And then do a few on the other side. By lifting my arm up, I'm helping move that lymph fluid throughout the body. All right, <clears throat> so that's one of many poses in yoga that could help your lymphatic system. And the second photo that you see on the slide is a woman with her legs up on a chair. And that's an inversion, which is wonderful for the lymphatic system. And it's the whole idea that the legs are higher than the heart and that lymph fluid is pumping down, moving throughout the system. You can also do legs up the wall just imagine your legs are right up against the wall. It shouldn't be about the hamstrings getting a stretch. It should just simply be about those legs being higher and the blood flowing down. So those are a few ways that we could fight toxins in the body, through the lymph, through the respiratory tract, and through the immune response, minimizing your stress. So any questions, I'd be happy to take when we're finished. Namaste. Disinfected procedures we need to follow because the environment in our office or in our home that is also important and we need to disinfect everything because there are lots of source of infections are there. So in Ayurveda there is a specific procedure that is called Dupana while various methods of fumigation and pellets and done using certain regions which may not be safe we are using some chemical reagents. Right? That is not good. 
instead of that we can go for some natural fumigation and sterilization techniques that is called dupan in ayurveda so we need to focus on dupan and what we can use for the dupan that is gugulu some neem neem uh, means as a direct indica karpur some laksha are used for the purpose of dupan so we need to fumigate do some fumigation in our office in our home and uh, particularly in india we are having some windows and everything and possible if it is possible we are of, often welcome direct sunlight so that will also have a good effect uh, because you know uh, particularly right now summer is going on in india so it is it is cold that uh, about 27 degree temperature all virus going to die so here in india almost 40 plus temperature so now that is the surface that was one of the source of infection that is finished right now the infection is going to spread one by one particularly in some hotspot area the patients are increasing because they are in close contact with the covid patients and they are having lack of immunity and that is the main reason for the spreading of this disorders but the one most important factor was the surface particularly the because of hot weather condition in india now that source is going down so dupan is very important and uh, if it is possible uh, there are lots of indian stores in uh, usa you go you will find all this like google is there some neem karpur laksha it is available in indian store you just go it and use it for the fumigation in your home that will also protect you from such virus bacteria inside your home so uh, these are the things now we need to go for some special care uh, something uh, about our nindra that is called sleep we need to go ahar sleep lifestyle all are very important very core for building and enhance immunity good sleep is one of the very important factor if the it, it will effect on the functioning of your organs integral part of biological clock while adequate night sleep recommended you just need to avoid the daytime sleep you need to have good sound sleep and for that also you can do some meditation some pranayam as then i demonstrated to you you can use some ayurvedic herbs like ashwagandha jatamasi or at night what you can do you can take at least uh, uh, golden milk right you can take some uh, uh, hot milk add some turmeric and you can drink it that is also one of the good source uh, of good sleep shiro opium means head massage you can do it pada opium you can do some foot massage so that will give you a good sound sleep and the best way is do some meditation before going to bed some pranayam is very, also very good for the sleep because when you are having a good sleep that will calm down your mental stress that will calm down your mental uh, uh, toxicity and it will enhance your mental immunity and it will provide you rest to all the organs of your body and by that way it will enhance your immunity so nindra nidra means sleep that is also one of the important aspect to build your immunity right so we are just focusing some basic thing that help you to improve your immunity now how can you boost your immunity right boosting the body's immune system may help minimize the effects and hasten the recovery from the disease if you are infected so some good herbs like amla that is ambalika officinalis ashwagandha that is vaidhaniya somnifera gilo that is taina tainaspora cordifolia you can take some natural smoothies from fruits vegetables green and red juices and nuts so these are the very good thing uh, particularly uh, in current con- uh, covid 19 pandemics giloi that is tainaspora cordifolia is one of the vital herbs proved antiviral enhance your immunomodulation enhance your immunity very important uh, here in indian uh, covid 19 uh, hospitals they are giving this samsamnivati that is the product of giloi or giloi ganvati to the patient and very encouraging results are coming up one more very important 
herbs that is vaidhaniya somnifera the ashwagandha ashwagandha is also very vital herbs that enhance your immunity ambalika officinalis that is also rasayan herbs that we also provide you vitamin c so these are the very important herbs you can take and it is available uh, if you are staying in usa in indian store so you can go and you can buy it and you can use it daily uh, for the prevention for, to enhance your immunity you can take plenty of fruits you can take good cooked vegetables or boiled vegetable soups green and red juices nuts these are the very good source of immunity because we don't need to take any vitamins or mineral things you just take proper food proper lifestyle proper stress management take care of your good sleep and take good food good food that is easily digested the digestion and particularly uh, avoid the food that i already insisted that avoid this fast food junk food or frozen food or uh, tin food that is not good for your immunity so avoid such food if it, you are taking red meat avoid red meat because red meat is also not good for the digestion that will also increase the arm or toxin in your body and by that way it, it can reduce your immunity so these are the very simple way uh, my uh, my uh, focus or my intent of today's uh, webinar is to give you some easy tips that you can follow at your home and by following that you can take uh, you can enhance your immunity so some dinacharya day life drink water hot water daily why hot water because it's beneficial to digest the toxin toxin is ama that is called endotoxin balance the doshas that is your vital energy bio energies of your body absorption drying and destruction of the mucus that i told you mucus from your mouth and improves your appetite that is very important so drink hot water daily particularly people in the usa because usa is now one of the most hot spot for this covid 19 condition gargle with hot water or salt or turmeric or alum nasal drops of ghee i told you uh, mustard oil or anu oil or coconut oil nostrils two drops once daily morning after bath bathing oil pulling that i already told you coconut oil or kaval dharan two three times a day golden milk that i already told you uh, turmeric with hot milk so these are the very easy easiest way don't get any fear don't scared only take care of your diet take care of lifestyle take care of stress management and just following the ayurvedic way of enhance your immunity definitely help you to fight against this covid infection so these are the very easier way and you don't need to take any other things just by improving your diet and lifestyle you can protect yourself from any pandemic what i'm talking about this covid covid is just after few years there will be there shall be some more new virus will become so we need to all the time we need to take care of our immunity physical and mental immunity and that is the only way because we don't know if vaccine is coming or not because this virus is changing the mutations and by changing the mutations it's very difficult to find out the proper solution or proper vaccine so maybe it will continue with us it will be a part of our life so we need to protect and prevent ourselves from such kind of pandemic or such kind of virus so how long we can stay in the lockdown condition after a few days all the lockdown will go and we need to stay with the covid virus this covid uh, infection so, so only by following some diet lifestyle modification and by enhancing the immunity we we'll definitely will stay away from such infection and that is the aim of ayurveda that is swasthya swastha rakshana means to keep healthy person very healthy so this is the aim of this today's webinar now we will take few questions from all the attendees if you have any question So there's a question on dupan um dr joshi um mm. you you mentioned about three four herbs mm. like uh, so how do you like if i buy google and buy kapoor uh, what do I, what am i supposed to do to create that um, dis disinfection which you, you talked about can you so if you are if you are having ashwagandha is there if you are having a tinas for a podifolia is there if you are having a ambelica officinalis amlaki is there you can take uh, all this 
is it is available in the form of herbal powder right so you just take it 50 50 grams or 20 20 grams whatever the package is available you just mix it in a airtight condes uh, container right and you can prepare a herbal tea twice a day you just take one spoon from this that's mixed powder put it in a glass of water in a bowl and add one gram or one one spoon powder and boil it on a very low fire for 15 to 20 minutes and boil it till it remains half then filter it and drink it so you just take it in the form of herbal tea twice a day and that is very very good it will enhance your immunity so these are the very simple herbs guduchi ashwagandha amla ki these are the very easiest way to prepare this uh, herbal tea and you can consume it not during this pandemic but i would like to tell you you can continue it forever because these herbs don't have any side effects they are very safe and it will provide you inner immunity any questions how about regular surya namaskar yeah dr neha takkar <laughs> it's one of the best thing then i can explain you surya namaskar is one of the best way and i i also emphasize to go for surya namaskar yes